Okay, thank you. Um, welcome everyone. Um, today we are going to um, talk a little bit about the Zen package that was uh, developed in, um, in in the project of Open Earth Monitor to interact with Zenodo platform. Um, so we are going to do um, a hands-on and how to use the package. Uh, it's a Python, actually, it's a Python library. Uh, Zen, it's uh, just the acronym for Zenodo. And um, my name is Hof. Uh, I'm, my background is on Java technologies and um, I, my PhD I, I did in uh, INPE in Brazil uh, on uh, a, a package in R called SITS, Satellite Image Time Series. And uh, where... Um, we implemented um, a lot, a lot of functionalities to access um, data, and uh, do machine learning for land use land cover classification, and um, yeah. For today, we have um, two main subjects here. Um, the first is the Earth observation data, but of course, uh, Zenodo is not just about. Earth observation data, it can be used to uh, uh, store any kind of uh, data sets, it can be uh, images, can be um, um, papers or tabular tables, and uh, you can upload everything there. So the main purpose of Zenodo is to promote uh, open science and open data. It is a platform that was uh, developed by CERN and um, under this uh, open air project to promote uh, open science. So the main uh, thing of uh, Zenodo, it's easy uh, to use. So you can uh, create a, a account there. And after you, you create this account, you can upload uh, your uh, data and share with uh, pairs uh, about your research. And um, here we are going to focus on Earth observation data because this is uh, how uh, we uh, mo motivated us to uh, create the package. So uh, the most of um, projects that works with Earth observation data um, usually works with a big amount of of uh, of data and uh, files usually are with gigabytes and um, we have a lot of files. And the main point here is to coordinate the, to, to manage the, the, the files, the data set in a way that you can uh, easily uh, streamline and share this uh, production of Earth observation data into a platform to share um, um, in this sense of open science and open data, okay? So um, I, I will show you some examples, but uh, first I would like to present more about um, the some concept, uh, conceptions uh, that we have to, to learn about to be able to work with Zenodo. Um, and uh, we are going, here we have, pretty defined uh, objectives. We are going to set up and install Zen library. You can do this in your own computer if you have Python or if you use some other kind of uh, uh, platform to run Python, for example, Google Colab or um, other platform you can also use. Um, uh, after that, we are going to connect to the Node API and uh, upload data and also update metadata. And uh, after that, we are going to conclude with the best practices uh, for data sharing in the Node. So these are the, the key points that we are going to, to cover. And uh, the Node is based on um, an, uh, one concept of deposition that is formed by a metadata of, of the, um, the data set you are working on and also a bucket 
So every deposition has a bucket where you store the files that you are um, willing to share. And um, this metadata stores information to, to make your data set discoverable. So this is the main thing that you have to, to, uh, to take care because you are curating some data and you want to people that find uh, your data. And to be able to do that, you have to um, fill this um, metadata. This, it's a kind of JSON file. And um, after that, it, there are some fields that you have to, to uh, fill. And then uh, you upload the files and make everything uh, as a deposition. So this deposition here uh, is a um, kind of resource, a basic resource on, on Zenodo. Zenodo is based on a technology called the Invenio RDM, okay, that manages behind the scenes all these uh, objects that we are going to, uh, to work. So the metadata, the bucket, everything is controlled by this Invenio RDM uh, on Zenodo. So the main um, object is the deposition. And the deposition has a, a life cycle. Um, after we create a deposition, we have a draft that we can uh, edit, put files, delete files. And, but uh, at this point, you uh, are not sharing uh, any data to anyone. It's just you can see the bucket and just so you can edit or uh, see what you are putting there. So you can update the, 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 the position, you can put more files, you can delete files, you can um, um, do all the updates that you need to do to prepare your, your deposition. And uh, after you have done of, with all this um, uh, updates, this edition, you can publish your deposition. Once you, you do that, uh, you have this, uh, re, uh, this draft transformed to a record and you get an DOI that is a number uh, uh, that identifies the document, the deposition that you put there. So um, uh, the record, it's freeze. Once you uh, publish your one deposition, um, you can just edit the metadata, but you cannot change the files. So this is how the um, Zenodo works. And if you want to add more files or if you want to change some file, you have to create a new version of that deposition. And then you can um, uh, edit, you, you create a, a new draft based on the previous one. So all files, are there and if you if you add new files it's um um uh, it's everything recorded on uh the previous version so for example if you have three files in the, in the original version and you create a new version and add a, a, a fourth file so at the end when you uh publish again you you can see an a uh, new deposition with a new doi and uh, you can see the, how, how the history of your deposition. And uh, this is what you uh, get at the end. So this is the main life cycle of, a, of uh, there's another depositions. And um, uh, here we have this, um, this legend where you can see the difference between a draft and a record. So while you didn't publish it, your draft, you can do any edition that you want, okay? But after you publish, it's freeze, okay? You can just update metadata. So this is the main uh, um, workflow to work on the nodo, okay? And um, all these steps here, you can see um, on the website of the nodo. And I will show you, um, some of the steps and um, but we are here to not use the the Zenodo interface on web because uh, um, usually people uh, 
that work with airflow observation data has a lot of files and to, to manage all these files uh, manually in a browser can be a cumbersome task. And uh, you easily you can uh, miss some file or, or, or do some mistake. So this is the, the, the main purpose of Zen library is just to automate all this process to manage the workflow of uh, the position and uh, update automatically uh, the metadata. So if you have a data set, you can update everything automatically. So uh, we are going to, to use um, some features that Zen library provides to do this. So uh, Python, uh, Zen library is a Python library designed to interact with Zen Nodo API. This is the main uh, objective of Zen library. Uh, it is intended to simplify the process of uploading, retrieving the data, and manage the data on the nodal. Okay. It also allows uh, automation of the common tasks that are related with the data sharing on the nodal. So here we have this um, interface. So uh, Zen is a client of the node API that takes your data and interacts with the Nodo API and uh, manage all these uh, data sharing tasks. Okay, so we, we, we saw here the main uh, concept of uh, the Nodo, that is the deposition. So this is what uh, the Nodo managed there and, and uh, maintained there. And from the side of library, of the Zen library, we have these three things here just to organize the tasks. We have a Zenodo class, we have a deposition class, and we have a local files class, okay? So the Zenodo class, the, the, this, uh, this concept here in Zen library is where you start to uh, your work. So you have to instantiate, create a new object of Zenodo class to be able to connect to uh, Zenodo API. And after that, uh, you can create the positions and you can uh, manage local files to upload to the to as uh, another deposition. So I put here uh, the main tasks that each of these uh, classes uh, do. For example, I we have uh, to do a connection to a API uh, of the node. We have to use this this class here, the node. This is the way we connect to Zenodo API. And uh, here we have a low level interaction. Okay, for more complex tasks, we use this deposition here. So for example, I want to uh, edit metadata. We can do this um, as a property of a class inside of this, this, uh, this object here. So if you use this object, you, you have to edit the JSON file and uh, this is more hard to do, okay? So this is a more low level, it's just the entry point, but you can make use of um, some helper, uh, syntax helpers that uh, I, I've implemented on this other two classes here. So if you want to manage a lot of files, you have to use a local files. Otherwise you are just uh, able to, to interact file by file here in this in this um, in this class so um, just to wrap up this slide here uh, to do complex tasks we you mostly we are going to use this two left classes here the position to manage the nodal depositions and local files to manage files that you stored or in your machine or in in other machine, in a server, S3 server, for example, uh, it doesn't have to be a local file. It can be also a HTTP file somewhere else, okay? And uh, yeah, so these are, are the three main uh, objects that you are going to work using Zen library. And you, you, you use these classes here to connect to Zenodo, to manage the position in Zenodo, and to manage your files that you want to upload to Zenodo. Okay, so any question? This is the first part, more theoretical. 
Um, how do you know when you're submitting a JSON um, metadata? How do you know when it's valid and how do you reject um, invalid JSON yeah. items? Yeah, uh, everything that you uh, try to do here, you have to follow some specifications. So if you miss something that is mandatory by Zenodo, Zenodo will tell you this is invalid. And this is why this, this class is here uh, and also the documentation of Zenodo and the documentation of Zen library can help you to identify uh, what is going on, what's the problem. So uh, if you use this deposition here, you can see the fields that you have to, to, to put some information there. But um, you can also rely on uh, some uh, template of a JSON file Prefill it, and then then you can use it as a as a file to send to the nodo. So, uh, what we are talking about is this thing here, because the bucket is just a place where you store files. So this is it's this is easy. The only thing here we have a limitation of of uh, storage. We have fifty gigabytes and a hundred files. This is the limitation of a bucket. If you if your files if your if your data sets have more than uh, fifty gigabytes or more than a hundred files, you have to create a new bucket, so a new deposition. One one deposition have just one bucket. If you if you your your data set is greater than uh, this this limitation, you have to create a new deposition and maintain and and uh, describe and do it in a proper way. We are going to talk about this at the end, the best practices, the main strategies that you can do to manage big data sets. Okay. Any other question? Uh, it's more a general question, but uh, is it really limited to um, Zenodo platform? Because uh, we have a lot of uh data storage platform with um, maybe the same API, you know? Or... Um, yeah, good question. Um, we have, uh, so uh, I think one year ago, uh, Zenodo uh, was, um, there was a transition in Zenodo that uh, they uh, changed the uh, back end to this RDM here, Invenio RDM. So, now, Zenodo is based on this technology, and uh, the Zen library is able to interact with this Invenio RDM. But this Invenio RDM is more generic uh, backend that can be used to other uh, by, by other um, platforms. So any platform that works with Invenio RDM, like Zenodo, can uh, potentially, I never have uh, tested, but can uh, potentially use also Zen library. So um, the main thing here is that a Zen library uh, interacts with uh, Invenio RDM. And uh, if you try to access other platform that is also based on Invenio RDM, um, theoretically should work. Okay, because you, you can also provide the endpoint of the, the platform that you are going to to work with. This is not something that is uh, hard coded. You have to inform the endpoint of, of the, the, the platform. Um, I'm wondering if I, for instance, put a cloud optimized GeoTIFF on Zenodo, and then you can connect in QGIS, for instance, directly to this file. Um, does this work? Does then Zenodo just deliver you the data you're looking at, or is this not intended? Is this really just sort of permanent storage on Zenodo, the goal? I think the answer is both. It's intended to, to store, uh, to have a, a permanent link, a DOI that um, you can uh, share, but for some formats like COG files, TIFF COG files, you can open like if you have it in a, using VS, VSA curl of GDAO, you can open it in QJS. Uh, I can show you uh, how, how, how to do this. 
it's pretty uh, straightforward. And uh, Zenodo will uh, provide uh, exactly the same um, functionality of COG because uh, the difference here with a COG file is that uh, when you zoom out the image, you don't have to download the entire image. You can just get an overview, a small piece of, of the file, and this loads like pretty fast. And then when you zoom in some, some region, then you just have to, to get access uh, to retrieve some portion of the file. And that uh, also it's, it's uh, supported by Zenodo. So it's a, uh, I think there is a, also a limitation on this. Um, you have some a limitation on how amount of requests you can do per minute. If you just like move fast and, uh, and do more requests than this limit, uh, like a hundred requests per minute. So you can uh, be, um, block it temporarily and then uh, but the, this there is just this limitation and you don't have to log in to to access any any data once you uh publish your deposition once you get in this state here a record everyone can access your your file it doesn't have to do any login or provide any token okay of course you can also keep it uh close it if you want because the record is not something that have to be published, uh, like public. But uh, by default, if you put it in a license that is open, everyone will, can can open uh, without any login. So you can just copy the URL based on uh, QGIS and it, it works. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so before we begin, we have to set up here two things. The first one is the environment of testing. We, we, we call the sandbox of Zenodo. I would like to you um, to enter in this, in this URL and uh, set up an account. So this uh, is, is, is a platform of Zenodo to do whatever you want to do. It's just for testing. So um, the DOIs generated in this platform is not for you, okay? It's just something that, okay, before you uh, start working on something for, for, uh, for sharing, you can test it here. If it works, it's nice then, or for, for lear learn uh, how, how it works. So this is the place where you can use, um, and time to time they, they delete everything there. Okay, so don't worry. Uh, so this cycle here, th this life cycle here works also in this sandbox. Once you publish your your uh, your deposition there, it's it you cannot also uh, you you cannot delete in the sandbox. But after a while, they they delete everything. Okay, it's just to see how this this workflow works. So uh, let me share here. So once you have um, sign up in this uh, sandbox of the node you can see, you, you'll be able to see here this menu, okay, where you can go to applications and we have to do something before working with Zen library there. So you have to click on the applications and create a token, a personal access token. You have to click a new token and then give a name here. For example, mm, yeah. And you have to 
okay give some scopes you can mark everything here and create and this is the token that you are going to use you have to copy this and you have to save it somewhere because we're not going to see this anymore okay so this is my uh, token i can copy it here and save Okay, that's it. Then you can see in the previous uh, page the token you have created. Okay. Um, once you have set up your account and created this token, you have to save it somewhere. But let me save mine here. And with this token, you are able to list your, so this token um, has a uh, Forza Nodo platform, has the information who, who you are and the, the positions, the drafts you created and you that, that you can edit also. So everything that you uh, do in the Nodo that change some, uh, change a, uh, uh, metadata that change the, the files you have there, you have to provide this token. So this is the, the, the way you uh, are safe and, no, and nobody else can access your stuff while you are preparing then. Okay, so the deposition uh, in the draft state cannot, can, can only be uh, uh, managed by someone that has this token, okay? And then uh, the second thing here is uh, you can use uh, your own machine to run Python or your uh, uh, the ED, IDE of your preference. But here I'm going to use a Google Colab. Okay, you can um, go to to this URL here. If you want to set up an uh, uh, an account there, and after you set up your account, you can see this platform here, this web page, okay? And then we can use uh, Zen here. So this is the main things that you have to set up to be able to run the examples that we are going to, to use here. Okay. So um, let's So to, to, uh, to install Zen library, we have to use uh, this command here. First thing that you can uh, do uh, to not to, to, to not copy this uh, all these commands here, uh, you can uh, you can access the Zen the Zen uh, GitHub. and you can cop here the installation command okay this is one thing the other thing i i i think i i've shared this presentation um if it is not shared yet i will share it so you can copy also from the presentation okay but most of the examples that i'm going to show here uh, you can see in this uh, readme file of the zen library 
and also in the documentation. Okay, so I will show you uh, how um, the main commands of Zen works. So the first command here, this pip install command uh, is to install it from uh, Zenodo, no, from the Zen library uh, GitHub. Okay, so this is the command to install it from GitHub in, in the machine that you are using. And uh, here we can see in the next command, uh, the way you access the Zenodo class and also local file class. So here we are going to use this class here, Zenodo, and this class here, local files. So we are able to uh, connect to Zenodo API and manage local files. And using this Zenodo class, we are going to use a deposition, okay? So this is the way you import these classes to your environment and then you can use them. So you have to, to write these comments. Okay. And uh, the way you have uh, you, you can set up your token is to paste the uh, to paste the token here. So uh, you create a string and uh, save it in, in into a, a variable call it token for example and then you have to pass this token here as a parameter of the Zenodo uh, class so we have now an object of Zenodo class in this variable call it Zen okay so this now every every time that you see this word Zen you you are accessing the object that access the Zenodo sandbox and using this token, so your account. So you have to pass here a URL. Uh, Zenodo, uh, by default, you, you access uh, using this class. If you not pass the URL, the, the default URL is the main Zenodo. But if you want to just to uh, work to see how it works, you can use this this uh, command here to access the Zenodo sandbox. Here we have the URL of, of Zenodo sandbox. Okay, and, and pass the token. So now you are able to interact with your depositions that you have there. So for example, to list the depositions, you can just type Zen, that is the, the uh, object we created in the previous command here, and interact with the deposition using this command, depositions.list. Then it lists all the depositions you have there. Uh, these depositions can be in different states, uh, unsubmitted or submitted depositions, okay? And uh, this is the way you can create a deposition. So using the same object, Zen, to interact with uh, Zenodo, we access the deposition and here we have command create to, to create a new deposition on the Zenodo side. So once you do this, you already, you, you already can uh, open the website of, of Zenodo and see that there is a deposition there, just doing this, okay? And you can uh, upload a file there, just provide uh, to this new uh, object that you create, so the dep variable here stores the information about the deposition that you created. So to create a new file in this deposition, you can uh, do this command here and provide the path or the URL of your um, file to, to upload. And after that, you can see the file uh, on, on Zenodo, okay? So let's do this uh, step by step. So we are going to create a deposition in the Nodo in sandbox of the Nodo and upload a file. So I'm going to um, change here to, to Google Collab. Okay. So this is the command to install. Uh, Zen, Zen library. 
So once you copy and paste and run this, this command here, it installs. And um, after that, you can uh, run this command to, to import the classes that you, you are going to, to work um, with Zen library. And here I'm providing the, the token. So let me run this commands. Yep. So here I use it a different way to get my token. So my token uh, is stored in, in a secret uh, session of the Google Collab and I'm, I'm getting it from there, but I could just copy and paste here and um, it also works. And here I instantiate an object of Zenodo and here I can see all the, the positions I, I created testing all the stuff. So I have a lot of the empty depositions and submitted. I can see here the ID of the deposition, uh, the, state, the state of the deposition. So the state here tells you if you submitted or if you uh, publish it, uh, if, you are, if, if you publish it or not, your deposition. So the state here, if it's unsubmitted, means that you can upload files there and delete files there, okay? Once you have submitted, uh, I think I have some example here. No, I don't have any example, but if you submitted it, it, it turns here into publish it and then it's freeze, okay? It freezes. So once you create a new deposition, so if you, if you open uh, an, uh, an account now, if you create an account now, uh, this list here will be empty for you and to create um, a deposition, you can do this. Depositions, create. Okay. And to get it into a variable to be able to interact with, with this deposition, you can just store it. And then you can see, for example, the ID of the deposition. So this ID here, Let's see if I can find it in Zenodo. So to be able to, to see all my my depositions, I, I go to this dashboard here. Okay, and then go to uploads. And here are all the depositions. This one that I created now. So you can look into the, the URL there. The number that uh, ends with uh, 445. And we can see here, this is exactly the same ID. So I can change the, so when also we create a new deposition, it is completely empty. It has no files and also no uh, metadata. So this is why you see this uh, thing here, no title, no description. So it's completely empty. So this is, um, these are all the fields that you, that you can uh, provide to the nodal to uh, provide metadata about describing your data set, okay? And uh, to be able to do that, so this is the, the command to create and upload uh, a file. So here the link of the file can be a local file in your machine. So you provide here a path to your file. Or it can be also like this example here, uh, uh, URL. So then we download this data and upload to the node, okay? And manage all the, the this process and uh, also um, get some information about this file, the size, the the date, the creation date, and also also the checksum to to keep tracking of this file later. So this upload the data, but your deposition is completely, the metadata of the deposition is completely empty, OK? 
Okay, so the way you have to to fill all the the metadata to describe your data set using Zen library is using this metadata property here of the deposition you create. So the uh, DEP here is the variable that is storing the deposition you created. And then you uh, can access metadata from this deposition. And then in this metadata, you can access all these fields that you can provide. And uh, to um, update the metadata, you have to call this update method. So there are a lot of metadata fields to get a complete list of this metadata uh, fields you can see, sorry, you can see um, the documentation. One thing that took me like a lot of time was document everything here. And uh, this is documentation of Zenodo, oh, Zen library. So here you have, uh, for example, metadata, to get everything about metadata, you can click here and I, I, we, we provide some examples where how you can uh, fill, but also uh, all the fields that you can uh, you can uh, use to interact with, with metadata uh, information, okay? Examples. So you can access this documentation uh, by uh, the GitHub of the Zen library. So there is a documentation session there where you can click and, and access all things that you can use on Zen library. So here we are, these are the uh, mandatory fields that you have to provide, at least these fields here. You have to provide uh, upload type. What's the type of, of the data set you are uploading here? Uh, I'm putting just data set because as an example of uh, earth observation data, so it's a data set, but could be a paper, could be, um, I don't know, an image of a paper could be a table. So there are a list of, uh, a predefined list of upload type. You, you uh, have to provide also a title. You have to provide also a description and you have to provide uh, the authors, the creators of, of this deposition. And that's the, the, the minimal stuff that you have to provide, okay? There are other, but uh, th these other fields are optional and you can see the a list of all these fields in the documentation, okay? And also you have provided this uh, these fields here, you can call update. Uh, and this um, interface I, I, I showed to you, it's the, the Zenodo sandbox interface where we can see Everything that you that we uh, do with Zen Library, if we refresh the uh, uh, Zenodo uh, platform, we can see the changes there. Okay. And here are uh, we have an example that we use two different uh, files. So here we are using local files. So the example I I showed to you was uploaded just one file because. We, we created a deposition and using the property files in the deposition, we create a file there. So we upload this file. But this, uh, there is no um, information about this file here. You, you just upload it there. If you want to keep track of a lot of files locally, you, you can use this, but if you want to automate in a, in a way, for example, I have, 50 files and I changed one of them. And I want to uh, upload just that file that I changed. So this local files will keep track of this, of, of this because it, it stores information about the checksum of the file. If the check, checksum changes, it just upload that file that changed. 
So uh, you don't have to upload everything again to, to Zenodo. So here the, in this example, uh, we have to provide a um, data set path where we are going to store all the metadata of the local files that we are going to, to manage. And here, a list of files, okay? And I pass uh, the, the list of files and the data set path to create a local files or object that I'm, I'm calling here DS, data set. And I can modify some, some information here. These files are uh, stored in this URL. So this command here just modifies, just uh, um, add a prefix in all the file lists I provided. So at the end of this command, all these files here um, have this uh, prefix here appended to it. Okay. So we have a URL for each file. To not have a big URL, you can do like this. You could also provide the complete URL here, but it will repeat. So if you have 50 files, you have to provide the 50 times this URL, you can do this. You provide just what changes and what is uh, fixed. You can do a modify URL and provide a prefix or a suffix or, or uh, other stuff that you can uh, see in the documentation. And after that, you have just to call update metadata. This is where a Zen library will check all the information about size, date, creation date, and the checksum. And uh, store this in, in, in this uh, data set path here. And if you modify some file and run this again, it detects that just that file you, you change it uh, have to be uploaded. So um, you don't have to upload every, everything again. And this is automatic, so you don't have to worry about this. And one thing that you have to worry about is, is the, the limitation of the, the bucket that we discussed here. This is the storage size. And uh, this data set that we created also keep tracks of that. And you can see uh, how, how much, how many gigabytes you, you, your data sets, this, this files you provided here have, and it cannot pass 50 gigabytes. If, if this happens, you have to split this. So you have to create more than one data set and split the list of files among them so that each uh, data set have at most 50 gigabytes. 